Let's talk about the most widely consumed food in the world. The food we turn to in our darkest of hours that basically defines what it means to be a human itself. The history of bread starts before recorded time. Up to 30,000 years ago, humans were collecting grain and mixing it with water to create a porridge or gruel. Sometimes they would heat it, making a flat thing that you could call bread. But we have no idea what language was like that far back, so who knows what they called it. Although they looked like us, these people were nomadic, moving with the migrations of the animals they ate. The men were the hunters responsible for the meat and the women were the gatherers responsible for the plants. So we have an extremely smart lady to thank for what happened next. After the last ice age, approximately 10,000 years ago, temperatures rose and grasses became a lot easier to find. Now, right around this time in the Fertile Crescent, somewhere around modern Iraq, someone noticed that if you left your gruel out, for some reason, it started to bubble. Now, you could do two things with this sour dough. You could cook it and create a wonderful, portable, fluffy food that can last for days on end and provide boundless energy. Or you could let your cold gruel sit for longer, fermenting to create a drink that was safer than water and made you feel pretty great. And bread and beer were born. Forget that nomadic lifestyle. Now we had a reason to stick around one area for a while, creating towns in cities. And with all that beer and bread we wanted, we needed to grow a lot of grain, which created agriculture. And wait, to plow all those fields and grind the grain, wouldn't we need some help? Which created the domestication of animals and slavery. Around 5000 BC, even though they had no idea of the why of it besides some kind of magic, the Egyptians learned that you could easily make bread in two ways either skim off a bit of beer and add it to your flour, or save a little bit of the dough each time you make bread and add it next time, what we now call a sourdough star. At this very time, cultures all over the world were figuring out agriculture and bread, just using whatever grain they had the most of. In Asia, that was rice. And in the Americas, that was corn. Egypt discovered that you could take grass, which was easy to grow, convert it into energy that could power a massive workforce of slaves, which was convenient considering all the gigantic structures they wanted to build. In fact, the most common item found in excavations of Egyptian slave quarters are bread baking bowls. And when the Hebrew people fled in the book of Exodus, they brought their bread bowls, but as we all know, couldn't wait for their bread to leaven. So basically abandoned their sourdough starters, leading to The Egyptians taught bread making to the ancient Greeks, who passed it on to the Romans, who were really into bread. So much so that every household received 75 pounds of wheat a month. Why? Because the Romans found that as the poet Juvenal observed, give them bread and circuses and they will never revolt. That's not a Roman accent. I don't know what that is, I'm sorry. The fall of Rome and the rise of Christianity leads to the medieval ages in Europe, where most people were dirt poor serfs who farmed grain, or were forced to give most of it to the lords as taxation. Now, you got to keep a tiny share, but because you probably didn't have the money to build a bread stove, you had to take it to the lord's baker to bake into bread. And he also took a cut. As the Romans could have warned them, this system that made bread so difficult for people to get couldn't last forever. By the late 1700s in France, for instance, buying bread used half of a person's income. A bread shortage is what caused 7,000 women to storm Versailles at the kickoff of the French Revolution. You may think at this point, I should mention Marie Antoinette saying, if the people have no bread, let them eat cake. But in the original phrasing in French, it probably would have translate to let them eat brioche, which is even dumber. But also all of this is dumb because it, she never even said that. It was made up about 50 years later. But at this point, all of this was over a food that no one knew for sure how it was made. Everything that happened inside bread when it rose and baked 
was a total mystery scientifically. But in bread loving France in 1840, Louis Pasteur discovered that all the little things that scientists had observed for centuries under rudimentary microscopes were alive. And all these little germs were mostly bacteria and yeast. For more on Louis, see our video on pasteurization. But thanks to him, everyone now knew the reason why flour and water left out starts to bubble. Simply, yeast is a fungus that is everywhere. It's in the air, it's on surfaces like on the skin of fruits, it's on your pets, it's on you, and that yeast gets into the flour and water and starts eating the sugars and basically farting, giving your dough lift when you bake it. All these starters that people were saving, they were just keeping the fungus that they had originally captured multiplying each time they baked. The timing of this discovery was perfect because the mid 1800s would see the industrial revolution and the population explosion that came along with it. All these workers would need a lot more bread and faster than the old days long sourdough process took. So baker's yeast was invented. And with every population boom came more bread innovations. Post-World War I saw the rise of mechanized sliced bread. Post-World War II with the baby boom came the great Wonder Bread white bread nightmare, where in order to further speed along bread production, they took a food with three to four major ingredients and crafted a chemistry experiment in a bag made to mimic bread, but not exactly be bread. But boy oh boy, did it pack well in a howdy doody lunchbox. Yes, I know this is not white bread. Uh, white bread is not allowed in this household. Now, as I record this, we're all inside in isolation. And flour and yeast are hot commodities as humanity relearns the value of baking their own bread. Literally half my Instagram feed is people baking. Seemingly, as we are all at our most disconnected in history, we are reconnecting with the thing that pulled us together into civilization in the first place. Beer and bread. <laughs>